Hi, I'm Sam and this is Rev and we are going around America's Great Loop aboard the Here's To Us, a Carver 504 cockpit motor yacht. <laughs> if you have any interest at all in doing the Great Loop, you should subscribe to our channel and hit the bell so you'll get a video, a notification every time we put out a new video. Yes, and if you want to follow us kind of real time because it takes a while to get the videos up, but you can always find out where we are and by going to our website www.whatyachttodo.com and there Rev has also a photo journal so it complements the videos that we have on there and a lot of great information. Right. Today we're going to tell you about our trip from Paris Landing over to Clifton, Tennessee. Yes. So we left at uh, the first light. <laughs> We got up really early, um, and we left at 6.15. Have we ever left that early before? Yes, we have. We've oh. left at first. Like, it's before. been a while. Yeah. But, yeah. yeah it was... So it was freaking freezing, and uh, we were all bundled up. Sam had, we had gloves. Sam had gloves on. He had a blanket. Uh, we were really, really cold up in, in here. Anyway, the, the journey was long, uh, 93 miles, and a lot of barges and bridges and fall colors. Yeah. <laughs> All along the way. Uh, we did see this one bridge. It looked like a bridge to nowhere. Uh, very old. I'm sure they started it back decades ago, and it just kind of stopped there in the middle of the river. Hello from the bridge of the Here's to Us at the helm here. Today's mission is to get from Paris Landing all the way down to Clifton Marina. It's about a 95 mile run up the Tennessee River. And one of the things about the Tennessee River Kentucky Lake is they draw it down the winter pool. So summer pool is 359 feet above mean sea level. Winter pool is 354 feet above mean sea level. It's currently at 355, so that is one foot above winter pool. Now the thing about the anchorages along the way is we looked at them because 95 miles is kind of a long run, but we've done long days before. We wanted to try to find something in between, but really couldn't find a suitable marina or anchorage due to the uh, winter pool. Uh, a couple of the marinas were reporting, you know, shallow water, and one marina was actually wiped out by a tornado. So our choices were really limited. I mean, if we had to absolutely do it, we could. So uh, we're, our backup plan is we have a couple bug out places that we would go to, but for the most part, we're running 95 miles today, which at, uh, at 11 miles an hour, which is a comfortable speed. We will get there in about eight and a half hours. So if we take a look here on our chart plotter, we're right on the sailing line, the auto guidance line, and you can sign it, see the dotted line there on a magnetic heading to 207. Our camera is switching back between the engine room that we're monitoring and our dinghy out the back. We have 63 miles to the destination. We'll get there at basically 3 o'clock in the afternoon. And uh, we can see our speed and heading and all this information down here. We also run down here, we run the Navionics program that you see on another phone. That's an independent navigation system. So there's a little bit of slop between them, but for the most part, we're safe, well safe within the channel. Anyway, talk to you a little bit later as we head on down the road. Yeah, so it was a challenge today with the barges and also the bridges. And we had one area where we had a barge. We were coming up. They were traveling the same way upstream with us. But taking a look at it, we had a boat behind us uh, following us, vitamin C. Shout out to Ed and Kathy. Uh, on vitamin C. So I waited and actually throttled back so that we could not interrupt the captain who was trying to get through the bridge. And uh, after we got through the bridge, then we called for the pass. So uh, just be considerate of the tow captains and try not to call 
when uh, you know you're probably going to pass them at a bridge, you might have to throttle back uh, to make sure that you deconflict with the bridge passing and the barge. J Vesco 1, J Vesco 1, this is Pleasure Craft, here's to us, here's to us, Al Copy. Go with J Vesco 1. Yes, sir, we are two Pleasure Craft, uh, about a quarter mile on your stern here. Uh, I'd like to get passing instructions. Yes, sir, come by me on two. You're starving my port. All right, see you on the two. Thank you, sir. Yes, sir, you have a safe trip up. Will do. This is vitamin C, the second PC. I'll just follow you on the two. Rod, on that. All right, here we go. On the two. Here we go. We've seen fall colors before on this trip, but the we had never seen uh, any so vibrant as we did. Yeah. Um, starting to see reds and deep golds, and it's just it was a really pretty, um, pretty uh, ride. Yeah, there was fishing boats out there, and also a diving boat. We had not seen that before. It looked like that would be a little cold. I'm sure the guy yes. had a wetsuit, or the girl oh, had a wetsuit on right. as they were diving out there. So yeah. we saw a diving boat. We did see a lot of houses on stilts. Um, we'd seen that back on the Mississippi um, and Illinois also, but um, there were tons of houses on right on the river on, on each side up on stilts, some small ones, some large ones, yeah. all different um, all different kinds of houses. Yeah, and it looked like a lot of new housing along the river as well. And you could see as they uh, build the newer houses, they're higher and higher off the water. So I guess they're learning how uh, that river can actually come up. But pretty interesting. We also experimented with the Garmin um, taking a look at one of the perplexing things to me is how that auto guidance works. All right, from the bridge of the here's to us, and I want to just kind of point out something here. I'm just experimenting a little bit with our uh, autopilot system, and this is the Garmin auto route system. You can see why did it make this big bend in here? I have no idea. I've been in touch with the folks at Garmin to figure out their order guidance system. Right now we are on track and what I did to put the boat on track was to get it squarely on the magenta line and engage the autopilot to follow the route. You can see right here we're left the course 1.5 feet. But as we get up here to this point at our speed 10 and a half this boat is going to try to make a 90 degree turn. Of course I'm not going to let it do that. But I just wanted to kind of underscore, you know, the dangers of using auto pilot, auto helm systems and not really paying attention to what they're doing. You could be on here and kind of get distracted and all of a sudden your boat is going to make almost a 90 degree turn to the shore. So what we're going to do here is we, there's two ways we could take this off. One way is I could disengage the autopilot by hitting this button, or what I'll do over here is, I'm just gonna go one left, of course, that will disengage the autopilot from tracking the magenta line, but it will put me back in heading hold. You can see here, the function is heading hold. So, just a caution. We also had a chance to see the Ladyfinger Bluffs um, as we were rolling along there. Spectacular land formations. Oh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And also uh, some mooring cells out there. Yeah. A lot of mooring cells for the barges, I guess, mm -hmm. to tie up as they switch them around uh, logistically, whatever they're doing with uh, hauling stuff. We always try to figure out what's on the barges, and uh, we look at it, but we can't really figure it out. And I don't know if it's cool to ask the uh, tow captain say hey, what are you hauling today uh, but that was pretty neat to see the mooring cells are pretty big mooring cells aren't they all right we were almost to our destination at clifton marina when sam noticed a guy waving an oar up in the air he was on a little what would you say like about a 20 50, 20 foot 20 foot um, runabout and he was uh, trying to paddle up river. Oh my and, goodness, uh, having a hard time. Not going to work. So we went over and, and we had a plan before we went over there. We went over to test the depth of it. Uh, it was still about 33 feet. Threw him a line 
and uh, we were able to start to tow him, but uh, for some reason he didn't want to tie his line off on uh, his or our line on his cleat, and so he was holding it, but he couldn't hold on to it. And then we saw a pontoon boat that was coming to rescue him, so we. Uh, yeah. hauled in the line and uh, the pontoon boat rescued and him. And he, he thought that would be easier too for the pontoon boat to um, to help him out. Anyway, it worked out just fine. Yeah. We got here to Clifton Marina. Um, it's really a fantastic... Uh, it was great to see our names on a sign as we walked up to the office uh, to get settled up. And um, Anyway, cute bar area and restaurant yeah. um, open every day. Yeah, new owners, and uh, a shout out to Susan and Stacy who took care of us for mm -hmm. uh, dinner, and a uh, great buffalo stew that we had. <laughs> it was awesome. So a great night here at Clifton Marina. Well, that's it for this trip. We will see you next time. All right. See you aboard the Here's to Us. Bye.